Um, welcome back to Dilemma's Concepts. What we're looking at today, we're looking at a measurement question. All right. So this question came um, some time ago. It's a CXE question. So it reads, the diagram below, not drawn to scale, um, shows a flexible piece of card in the shape of a sector um, of a circle with the center O and the radius 18. So we're looking at that. So we're dealing with the sector of a circle. And we were given here what they want us to use pi as, right? So let us focus on the first question. The first question said, show that the parameter of the chord is 80 centimeters. So when we're talking about parameter, we want to understand that the parameter is the distance along the boundary, right? So we're talking about, we're going to have to find this, right? We're going to find that. And then we want to add it to this and then add it to this as well, right? So we want to add up all of those distances. Um, so in so doing, right, in so doing, what we want to do is to first um, label what we have. So we definitely know that since OR and OPR, they're both radius of the circle, then that means this is 18 centimeters. So what I definitely need to find is actually the distance from P to R. So I need to find this piece here. And if I should add that, what I have, I'll get it. So let us find the length of the arc, PR. So we start off by saying arc length PR is given by the sector angle which is going to be 140 over 360 times 2 times pi times r. And r is 18. So in this case, what we're looking at is, is actually here. Let us see what we could cancel. If there's anything. So we could find one number for the top. So the number for the top, we're looking at 140 plus two, so 140 times two times 22 times 18. So we're looking at 110880 all over 360 times seven. So that's 2520. So let us do a final calculation. 110880 divide by 2520. And this becomes 44 centimeters. So now the perimeter, so 44 would have been for this uh, section here. So the perimeter is going to equal to 18 plus 18 plus 44. And that should prove that the answer is really 80. So there we have proven that we got the 80 centimeters for the perimeter. All right. Now, the next question says here, next question says, calculate the area of the card OPQR. So the area of that cord, that's OPQR, which is the area of the sector that you're looking at, right? So the area of the sector has, um, there's a certain formula, which is just the area of the circle um, with the fraction here of the center over 360. So here is the formula. So the area of sector, is actually equal to the angle over 360 pi r squared. Now the angle is 140. So what we're looking at is 140 over 360 times pi times r, which is 18 times 18. So let's put that together to see what we get for the area of that sector. We could find the answer for the top number. So Top numbers, 140 times 22 times 18 times 18, and we'll get 997920 over 360 times 7, 2520, 
divided by 2520. So the area of this sector is 396 centimeters square. So there we go for the area of the sector. All right, so that's the area of the sector right there. All right, so let us move on. All right, so the question went further. He said the court is spent um, on the edge of OP and OR. Uh, they were taped together so that the cord forms a curved surface of the cone, right? Um, with a circular base PQR. So you can see that this part was the perimeter. So this part will becomes the, the circular base for the cone. And they want us to draw a diagram and then clearly um, <clears throat> showing clearly the measurement 18, the perpendicular height and the radius. So OP and OR was taped together. So we're, we're looking at getting a shape like this. Right, so we're looking at a cone. Let me draw a better cone. Let me get myself a better cone. <clears throat> All right, so we have a cone like this. <clears throat> and with every cone, there's going to be its real height. And then this is going to give us that radius there. So this is going to give us the R, and this is going to be the true height. And then now uh, we'll have 18 along the side, which would be, so let us look. Let's look. So we have OPOR. Right, good. So this would have been where O is, all right? So basically, that's what we're looking at. O is up there, P and R would have been overlapped, right? Because we brought them together, right? So it says the card is spent where OP and OR are taped together, all right? So OP and OR, they are right here. So I'm going to take off with P because OP and OR, they're right there, right? So basically, so... So let us now look at what's going on. So this is actually the cone that we have. Um, let's see what they want. So we put on the 18 centimeters. So basically, the, a cone is actually developed from the sector, all right, of a circle. So if you get the sector of a circle and you connect the two end parts, like the P and the R together, paste them on, then you will end up getting a cone. So that's what we have here. This is a diagram that they would want to see, right? Now, the question follows, and it says, calculate the radius of the circular base. Now, what we want to understand is that if you're going to find the radius, you need to have an understanding of what goes on, right? Now, remember, the radius is going to be from this circle here. But what do we know about this circle is that we found the perimeter, um, the length of the arc, which would have been from P to R. In other words, if this is P and you go all the way around and come back and there is an R here, as in P and R overlap, then if you should take that distance that we, we had before, remembering that P, R, right, was actually 44 centimeters. What is going to happen here is that this PR will now be equal to the circumference of this cone, right? So the arc length becomes the circumference of the cone, of the base of the cone. So what we're going to do is to utilize the fact that circumference is equal to 2 pi r, right? So we can utilize circumference is equal to 2 pi r to find R from that. So let us now take that home. Circumference is equal to two pi R. Um, remember that pi is given as 22 over seven. The circumference would have been from the length of the arc, which is 44 above, right? So we just discussed that. So in other words, then I could suggest that 44 is equal to two times pi, times r and here i will be finding the radius so let us take our time to work out so what we have is 44 which is equal to 44 over 7 times r 
If I multiply both sides by the reciprocation of that fraction, so I'm going to multiply by 7 over 44. So basically, I want you to look at what I'm doing here. I am taking this, and I'm going to reciprocate it here. So you could see that I'm doing it so that they would cancel out, for example, 7 will now cancel 7, and 44 cancel 44. So we're left with the R alone. But whatever you do to one side, you have to do it to the other side. So I'm going to multiply this by, by 7 over 44 on the other side here for balancing sake, right? So this is brought here for balancing sake. Now, when I do that, I can cancel the 44 and the 44. What am I left with? 7 is equal to... 7 is equal to the radius. So the radius is actually 7 centimeters. So you could see how we took um, the understanding of the, I would say, the arc length and then brought it to the, the base of the cone, which is a circle, and then used that to solve the problem, right? Now let's see what else that they have here. They say using Pythagoras theorem or otherwise, right? Determine the perpendicular height of the resulting cone. So let us drop back the cone, look at what we have. So here is the cone, right? So we have a cone like this, right? Where we have this circular base there, right? Now we already established the fact that this is my radius and this is actually seven centimeters. This is gonna be my, my true height, right? So this is H, I don't know what it is, but I do have from O to P, which is 18, or O to R, still 18, right, centimeters. So if you look carefully, we're getting a right angle triangle here, all right, where 18 is our, 18 is our, our um, hypotenuse. So the longer side is 18. So what we want to do is to start off using the Pythagoras by saying 18 squared is equal to 7 squared plus h squared. So let us put it together. 18 squared will give us 324. And this is equal to 49 plus h squared. So subtracting 49 from both sides in an effort to have the 8 squared by itself first. So we want to subtract. So I will have 275 is equal to h squared. From here, I'll take the square root of both sides because I need h. So the square root of 275, this is going to give me 16.58. So I'll say 16.6, the three significant figure centimeters, and that is the height right there. So there it is, utilizing those ideas, and we came up with those answers. Thank you for watching Dunning Mott's content. See you next time.